All right, guys, so this is a quick video. Uh, there were two questions that were sent in um, by a viewer, and you know, one of them kind of talks about the bell-shaped curve and how do you interpret um, as far as ranges, and it really goes back to the standard deviations, and so, so make sure you're familiar with that. And then the second question really kind of follows up on uh, case control and cohort and how to identify you know, kind of what they're looking for. Um, so kind of make sure you understand both of these types of videos for your exams. All right, it says, <clears throat> assuming a normal Gaussian distribution with a mean of 0 0.10, which of the following most closely corresponds with this newly proposed reference range? Okay. All right, so looks like there's some confidence intervals here, or at least that's what it appears, but I don't know. I don't know. It says, during a literature review, 1,000 healthy volunteers, the lab reference range for a marker to potentially treat depression in the brain is 0 0.08. Eight through 0 0.12 at the 95% level of probability. The psychiatric research team would like to use, use the 99.7 um, reference range to assess these, uh, to assess patients with major depressive disorder pre and post ECT treatment. Assuming a normal Gaussian distribution with a mean of 0 0.10, which of the following most closely corresponds with the newly proposed reference range? So really, they're testing your ability to say the difference between 95 and this 99.7. But do you remember what the other one is that we have to understand? Like, one standard deviation is this. Two standard deviations means 95%. Uh, and then three standard deviations means 99.7. So really, what does, that, what does that mean? Well, they say this normal Gaussian distribution, right? The bell-shaped curve. And so one standard deviation, like if here's the mean, okay, if here's the, the very, very, very middle, the mean, the average, if you go out one standard deviation from that in both directions, that should include 68% of, of, of the population in the study. Okay, that's one standard deviation. If you go out another standard deviation, they're saying, well, that should include 95% of everybody. And then if you go out one more standard deviation, that's going to include basically 99.7% of everybody, and, you know, essentially everybody out there, right? So <clears throat> what, this, what this question will test your knowledge on, whenever you see this stuff and they're asking all this, you got to go back to that one standard deviation, 68, 2 is 95, 3 is 97, okay? Now, they are essentially telling you that the mean is 0.1 in this, in this scenario. So the mean is 0.1, and then the distribution for the 95% is actually 0.08 to 0.12. Now, where would that go? Do you think this 0.08 to 0.12 would go here? Or do you think it would go here? Or would it go in the very out, outside one? Well, it's 95%. So that's actually two standard deviations away. So... That's 0 0.08 and 0 0.12, okay? But <clears throat> if that's here, how, do, how can we determine what's, what's this outer one, right? Because they're asking what the 99.7 distribution is. Well, we've got to find out, really, what is one standard deviation? How much is this right here, okay? How much is that right there? Well, let's think about this. If this is the, the, the mean, the very middle, I got to go out something here and then there again to get this 0 0.12. Well, it's pretty simple math right there, right? You can tell that it just goes 0 0.10, 11, 12, right? So it only took 0 0.0, it took 0 0.01 to go from here to here. And then it takes 0 0.01 to go from there to there because 0 0.01 is the standard deviation. That's one standard deviation. So they went 0 0.01 in each direction from here to get um, to get these reference ranges. So for 68%, you'd be between 0 0.09 and 0 0.11. For 95%, you'd be between 0 0.08 and 0 0.12, right? That's what we got right there. Now for this 99.7, what do we got to do? We just got to go out another extra deviation, and that would be 0.13. And back here, we would go down to 0 0.07. So 0 0.07 through 0 0.13, answer choice A. 
The key to this question is you got to under number one, you got to understand this. You got to have that memorized, okay? You got to have that memorized. They're going to give you the mean and they're going to give you one of these guys and then you're just going to have to calculate. The key is you got to calculate how much is one standard deviation. And if you know how much one is, you could figure out any of these things, okay? You just got to just got to basically just count backwards. Count backwards or forwards, okay? But a good problem. This is an interesting problem. Uh, good one to have some knowledge on so you don't see it for the first time on the exam. Uh, so replay this over if you need to. All right, this one says, which of the following best represents the type of study performed above? Okay, and then you see this case control, cohort, blah, 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 blah. All right, it reads, a group of researchers are trying to determine whether there is a correlation between taking caffeine and medical school admission score, test scores. Researchers enrolled 5,000 undergraduate subjects and placed into different groups depending on their caffeine intake. The students are followed for five years. The data revealed no statistical difference between the medical school admission test scores and the caffeine intake while in undergraduate studies. Which of the following best represents the type of study performed? All right, so they, 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 they got some people and then they followed them for several years, okay? The key that you have to understand from this type of question, especially on the, on the step, because they're going to make sure that you understand cohort versus case control for the most part. Now, cross-sectional, that is just a single point in time. And that is not what this is doing, right? They enroll people and they follow them for some time so we can get rid of this guy. The key to this is case control versus cohort. Remember, case control. One group has it, one group does not, okay? A cohort, they both look the same. So in the beginning, nobody has the disease in a cohort, right? So then you have to ask yourself, in this research, did anybody have the condition, okay? Did anybody, was anybody in medical school at the beginning of this study, really? Because, I mean, that's essentially what they're asking is, they're, they want to find the correlation. Is there a correlation between the caffeine and medical school? So they could have been, is there a difference between smoking and cancer? And so if at the beginning of the study, nobody had cancer, just like in this one, nobody's in medical school, then this is going to be a type of cohort study, okay? If at the beginning of the study, someone had cancer and someone did not, then you'd be jumping all over case control. But since nobody's in medical school in the beginning of the study, then it's definitely a cohort. A cohort. Now, is it a prospective or retrospective? Prospective means looking forward. Retrospective means you're looking backwards. And a retrospective is more like a medical chart review, right? You're looking back at stuff. Uh, and this study is not looking backwards. This one's actually looking forward, okay? So the correct answer, it's going to be cohort because, again, nobody's in medical school at the beginning. Nobody had the disease, per se, in this one. And it's prospective because it's future uh I say future oriented, but you know, future focused on that. So again, know the difference between case control and cohort. Case control associated with the word odds ratio. And again, you get the one number over one number. Oops, over C over D. Uh, cohort study associated with relative risk. And that's one number over two. You should be saying that every time you say those words, okay? Anyways, guys, hope the video helps. Thank you.